Welcome everyone to this tutorial all about async and await. We are going to be exploring how these two keywords make asynchronous programming easier by using a lot of visual guides followed by code examples. Async and await are quite new to the world of JavaScript, having been added in ECMA script 2017. They essentially help promises look more readable by making it look like the old school synchronous code. Think of them as syntactical sugar for promises, if you will. There are two parts to using async and await, okay? But let's look at the async keyword just after our video sponsors Career Karma Shoutout, who has made this video today possible. Career Karma is essentially a must-have for any aspiring developer, as it is one of the fastest ways to break into a career in tech. They offer bootcamp advice as well as some immersive courses that are designed to teach you the skills to get hired quickly and have helped over 1 million workers navigate their career each month through their community of like-minded devs, mentors and coaches. They even have live audio rooms in their app hosted by people like me, so come join and hang out. I have even been given a link for you in which 1,000 of my subscribers to sign up to Career Karma will get exclusive early access to Career Karma's new free mini coding bootcamp, where you'll learn the basics of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Okay, so thanks, Career Karma. Now, this video is part of a mini series that I am doing about asynchronous JavaScript and is in fact the last episode of this series. If you haven't seen the others, then please do check out the playlist that I have linked in the description below. And as always, I really do appreciate that sub as this is the way that I can continue to create free content for everyone here. Here we have a function, just a standard, super boring function. Now, I'm going to change this into an async function. How you ask? Simply by adding the keyword async before it, just like that. So just like that, I've turned it into an async function. But now if I run this code, you will see a promise is returned. It truly is an async function. I can of course also write this as a function expression, or in this case, an async function expression. So you would have seen me do this before. If you watch my other tutorials, I'm simply using this function and swapping around to a function expression by using the arrow function and assigning all of this to a const. Okay. Now, if I was to call print, as we just learned, it would return a promise, right? From the previous video on promises, we know that to consume the value returned when the promise fulfills, we can use a then block. So I would simply chain it. So write then followed by, I'm going to use an arrow function for this, not a function. There we go. I'm just going to console log the response. Simple. How easy was that? So to recap, the async keyword is added to the function to tell our code that this is an async function and we'll return a promise rather than returning a value. But we still need to pair it with await. Let's move on to how we would use await in a similar way to make this code more readable. Await only works inside async functions within regular JavaScript code. It can be put in front of any promise to pause your code in that line until the promise is fulfilled. Let's have a look at this in code. For this, I'm going to go back to a previous code example I used in the video about promises in which we make a fetch request to the country's API and rewrite it with the knowledge we have to make everything more readable. I'm just going to keep this up here so you can compare the two. So as a recap, what is happening here, if you remember, or if you watched the previous video, is that we chain some promises together. This fetch here returns a promise. We then chained then to it and then call this function when that promise resolved. Then we returned another promise and waited for that one to resolve and then ended it with a catch to catch all the errors. It looks fine, but let's get to using our new async and await keywords to really clean it up and make it way more readable. So the first thing I'm going to do is write a function and I'm going to call it get data. Now let's make it asynchronous based on what we have learned. So how do we do this again? That is right. We simply write async in front of it. So now we have an async function. This is going to return a promise as we know from before. So let's try this out and call get data and wrap it in a console log. Okay. And 
There we go. A promise is being returned. Now, we need to use a weight inside of it. This time, I'm going to use fetch again, but instead of chaining it with then, I'm going to stick the word await in front of it. This await essentially stops the fetch from assigning a value to the response until there is a response to be given, or in other words, until the promise from fetch has resolved. Now, we are not yet done. In the previous example here, we had another promise, right? That's why we chained the then here. We need to deal with this second promise. So in other words, we need to deal with the return of what happens when we grab response and use the JSON method, which is also asynchronous, which means it also returns a promise. So how do you think we should do that? A clue is that we just did it. So once again, we would grab the response and use the JSON method on it to get the data. Now let's console log the data and call the async function of get data. Wonderful. Okay, so let's just do that here. Wonderful. But we are not yet done. We want to be able to use this data outside of the function. So let's go ahead and return it. So when I call the function, this will get returned. But once again, this is not enough. Why? Surely if we call get data, it will return the data, right? Well, wrong. Get data is an async function. And what do we know about async functions? They return promises. So now I'm actually going to go back to using then for this. So I'm going to chain the get data with a callback that looks like this. We chain this as it is outside now of our async function, so we can't use await anymore. Await needs to be inside the async function, as we said at the beginning. Okay, so this is what the code will now look like. We are now chaining using then, and we can, of course, also catch the errors again by chaining the catch and logging out the errors. And Wonderful. I hope you've learned a lot in this video. I hope it was useful to you. And please do not forget that if something doesn't make sense, please do comment in the description, in the comments below, as it really is my goal to help you understand all about asynchronous JavaScript. Thanks very much for watching this mini series. I hope you can see the difference and how we progress from the beginning video to this very end one. Once again, all the videos will be available in the description below as a little mini series.